Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read you a very important text that's come out of the Catholic Church recently. I know what you're saying. You're thinking the Catholic Church, it's not always been great of late. It's been full of dodgy, you know, weirdos and all kinds of, you know, the current Pope is probably a black Pope. Yes, I would agree with you on all those points. But today on uh, the report from Tiger Mountain, we're going to talk about some other statement released by the Catholic Church. There's still a few good priests left in the Catholic Church. And they've got something interesting to say on COVID-19 and the New World Order. So just hang around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've got this amazing um, text I'm going to read to you. First, I'm going to read it to you. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it's about, I don't know, it'll take about two or three minutes to read it to you, but it's a very important statement. And then I'll, I'll discuss it with you because I think it's a very important text. And it's been released by uh, some conservative priests within the Catholic Church, some ones who are still Christian, obviously, the ones who have not been taken over by the cabal because the cabal has been... Uh, slowly infiltrating the Catholic Church for over 100 years. It's well known. The current Pope is a black Pope. Um, you know, obviously, Satan is interested in, in destroying uh, the Catholic Church because it's, I guess, the main representative of um, Jesus Christ on the planet. So it makes sense that Satan has been trying to uh, infiltrate this place. So, you know, th that's why there's so much trouble we've been having with the Catholics. But there are still a few good priests left. Father Bob locally, for example, and um, these priests here released this statement. It's called Appeal for the church and the world to catholics and all people of goodwill so i'll read it to you from the internet because it's quite interesting in this time of great crisis we pastors of the catholic church by virtue of our mandate consider it our sacred duty to make an appeal to our brothers in the episcopate uh, I can't know how to put it, episcopate uh, to the clergy to the religious and to the holy people of god and to all the men and women of goodwill this appeal has been undersigned by intellectuals, doctors, lawyers, and a whole bunch of, you know, I'll just cut, you know, truncate that a little bit, a whole bunch of important people have undersigned this document. The facts have shown that under the pretext of COVID-19 epidemic, the inalienable rights of citizens have in many cases been violated and their fundamental freedoms, including the exercise of the freedom of worship, expression, and movement have been disproportionately and unjustifiably restricted. Public health must not and cannot become an alibi for infringing on the rights of millions of people around the world, let alone for depriving the civil authority of its duty to act wisely for the common good. This is particularly true as gro growing doubts emerge from several quarters about the actual contagiousness, danger and resistance of the virus. Many authoritative, authoritative voices in the world of science and medicine confirm the media's alarmism about COVID-19 appears to be absolutely unjustified. We have reason to believe on the basis of official data on the incidence of this epidemic as related to the number of deaths, that there are powers interested in creating panic among the world's population for the sole aim of permanently imposing unacceptable forms of restriction on freedoms, of controlling people and of tracking their movements. The imposition of these illiberal measures is a disturbing prelude to the realisation of a world government beyond all control, i.e. New World Order. We also believe that in some situations, the containment measures that were adopted, including the closure of shops and businesses, have precipitated a crisis that has brought down entire sectors of the economy. This encourages interference by foreign powers, i.e. China, and has serious social and political reproductions, repercussions. Uh, those with government responsibility must stop these forms of social engineering by taking measures to protect their citizens whom they represent and whose interests they have a serious obligation to act. Likewise, let them, let them help the family, the cell of society, by not unreasonably penalising the weak and elderly, forcing them into a painful separation from their loved ones. The criminalisation of personal and social relationships must likewise be judged as an unacceptable part of the plan whose advocate uh, isolating individuals in order to better manipulate and control them. We ask scientific community to be vigilant so that cures for COVID-19 are offered in honesty for the common good. Every effort must be made to ensure that the shady business interests, we know who that means, do not influence the choices made by government leaders and international bodies. It is unreasonable to penalise those remedies that have proved to be effective, uh, i.e. chloroquine, and are often inexpensive just because one wishes to give priority to treatments or vaccines that are are not as good but which guarantee pharmaceutical companies far greater profits and exorbitant public health expenditures. Let us also remember as pastors that for Catholics it is the morally unacceptable to develop or use vaccines um, derived from the material from aborted fetuses which most contemporary vaccines do contain. Uh, we also ask government leaders to ensure that forms of control over people, whether through tracking systems or any other form of location finding, are rigorously avoided. The fight against COVID-19, however serious, must not 
be the pretext for supporting the hidden intentions of supranational bodies, i.e. globalists, uh, that have strong commercial and political interests in this plan. In particular, citizens must be given the opportunity to refuse these restrictions on personal freedom without any penalty whatsoever being imposed on those who do not wish to use vaccines uh, contact tracing or any other similar tools. Let us also consider the blatant c contradictions of those who pursue policies of drastic population and control at the same time present themselves as saviours of humanity without any political or social legitimacy. Finally, the political responsibility of those who represent the people can in no way be left to experts who can indeed claim immunity from prosecution, which is disturbing to say the least. We strongly urge those in the media to commit themselves to providing accurate information and not penalising dissent by resorting to forms of censorship as is happening widely on social media, in the press and on television. Providing accurate information requires that room be given to voices that are not aligned with a single way of thinking. This allows citizens to consciously assess the facts without being heavily influenced by partisan interventions. A democratic and honest debate is the best antidote to the risk of imposing subtle forms of dictatorship, presumably worse than those our society has seen rise and fall in recent past. Finally, as pastors, responsibility for the flock of Christ, let us remember the church uh, firmly asserts it, uh, her own autonomy to govern, worship and teach. This autonomy and freedom is are an innate right that our Lord Jesus Christ has given her uh, for the pursuit of her proper ends. For this reason, as pastors, we firmly assert the right to decide autonomously on the celebration of Mass and the sacraments. And he goes on to talk about a whole number of um, you know things that particularly affect the Catholic Church that I won't necessarily go into here. We should all invite people of goodwill um, not to shirk their duty, to cooperate for the common good, each according to his or her own state and, and possibilities, and in the spirit of fraternal charity. The Church desires such cooperation, but this cannot disregard either a respect for natural law or a guarantee of the individual's freedom. The civil duties to which citizens are bound imply the state's recognition of their rights. We are called to assess the current situation in a way with the teaching of the gospel. This means taking a stand either with Christ or against Christ. Let us not be intimidated or frightened by those who would have us believe that we are a minority. Good is much more widespread and powerful in this world than many would have us believe. We are fighting an invisible enemy. We know who they mean by that, that seeks to divide citizens, to separate children from their parents, grandchildren, not talking about the virus here, grandchildren from their grandparents, we're talking about the globalist cabal, the faithful from their pastors, students from teachers, customers from their vendors. Let us not, us allow, let us not allow centuries of Christian civilization to be erased under the pretext of a virus and an odious technological tyranny to be established in which nameless and faceless people can decide the fate of the world by confining us all to a virtual reality. If this is the plan to which the powers of this earth intend to make us yield, know that Jesus Christ, King and Lord of history, has promised that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Let us entrust government leaders and those uh, who rule the world the fate of the nations to a mighty God and that he may enlighten and guide them in this time of great crisis. May they remember that as just as the Lord will judge us pastors for the flock which he has entrusted to us, he will also judge government leaders for the peoples that they have the duty to defend and govern. With faith, let us beseech, beseech the Lord to protect the church and the world. May the Blessed Virgin help, uh, help of Christians crush the head of the ancient serpent and defeat the plans of the children of darkness. And it's signed uh, 8th of May 2020. Our Lady of the Rosary of Pompeii. So that's a very interesting statement from the Catholic Church. Now, one of the most interesting things you should point out about that statement is there is not a single um, uh, mainstream news press article on that statement. Obviously, it didn't come from the Pope. Um, it came from a, a bunch of more conservative, um, uh, like, priests and pastors who are further down the trough, who are not as high up in the kind of Catholic Church hierarchy. Um, but th this group has been very critical of um, Pope Francis, for example, and they've made an intimation that he's a black pope and things like this. Because, you know, the Catholic Church, like, like any organisation, like many of our governments, it's, it's been infiltrated and has been for a long time. So this group of good priests have made this statement, and uh, I think it's a very powerful statement. It pretty much speaks for itself. But the very fact that it warns of a new world order, it, it warns that, you know, that, that, that this crisis was an overreaction. It warns of a kind of um, 
impinging kind of 1984 totalitarian um, state that's being brought in under all this. I think it's all extremely powerful. You know, I'll provide a link also in, in the, uh, the report from Tiger Mountain, this report that can take you to the original text and you can sign it yourself. Um, it's something that asks for signatures. So um, it's a fascinating document and I highly recommend you check it out. So that's the report from Tiger Mountain for today.